Hello and welcome to this quick grab. In this one, we're going to look at the concept of the cycle of fourths. There is a complementary cycle called the cycle of fifths, and there will be a quick grab video on that as well, as well as a larger video which looks at the, the total concept of the cycle of fourth and the cycle of fifth and what they're useful for, which is pretty much everything in music. They are incredibly useful structures to understand. But just at a glance, the cycle of fourths is essentially a way of traversing every single one of the 12 tones. Um, by the same interval each time, in this case, by the interval of a perfect fourth. So a perfect fourth is five semitones. So if I was to start at this C here and travel five semitones upwards, one, two, three, four, five, I end up on this F here. If I was to do the same thing again, one, two, three, four, five, B flat, one, two, three, four, five, E flat, and so on and so on. So as you can see, the first four notes that I have on this example up the top are those notes we just found, C, F, B flat, E flat. Let's go through the whole cycle. So starting on C, up five semitones to F, up another five semitones takes me to B flat, but I'm gonna also drop down. So normally I'd be getting to this B flat here, but I'm gonna drop back down to this one here. The concept's the same though, it's still traveling by perfect fourth. So let's go from there, moving from the F to the B flat, Another five semitones will get me to E flat, perfect fourth to A flat, perfect fourth to D flat, perfect fourth to G flat, then to B, to E, to A, to D, to G, and finally back to C. The important thing about to understand about the cycle is that even though we are starting and ending on C, the whole concept of the fact that it's a cycle means we could start at any point. So for example, I could have started this cycle in E flat. Providing I travel through perfect fourths, I will eventually get back to E flat and I will visit every one of the 12 tones along the way. As I've said before, the cycle is incredibly useful for many things. There are a whole ton of things in Western music that come out of the cycle of fourths and the cycle of fifths. But just to look at one example of how we can use it, it can be used to remember the order of the flat keys. For example, which key has no flats, which key has one flat, which key has two flats, and so on and so on. To do that, we'll take a look at a diagram. Okay, so I've got an empty cycle in front of me. As you can see, it looks very much like a clock. There are 12 tones that we can visit between um, a C and a C, for example. So there are 12 independent pitches, and that corresponds, of course, to the 12 points on a clock. So this is why it looks very clock-like. So let's start at the top. We start at the top with C, and the reason we put C at the top is it's the key which has no sharps and no flats. Now, because we're moving in the cycle of fourths, we're gonna move counterclockwise. So my next note would be an F, then a B flat, then an E flat, then an A flat, then a D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D and G gets us back to C. The important point to note is that every single time I move one of these steps, I'm traveling a perfect fourth. That's the important point to remember. Here is the, the interval is a perfect fourth or five semitones. Every time we move, we move by perfect fourth or five semitones. So one of the things that we can use this for, as I said, some very in useful structure, but one of the things we can use it for is remembering the order of flats when we're adding flats to key signatures. So for example, C at the top here, as I've said, has no sharps or no flats. F major has one, B flat has two, E flat has three, A flat has four, D flat has five, G flat has six, and there is a key which has seven flats, which is the flat version of B, so to speak. It would effectively, what we're talking about is C flat. C flat and B are what we call enharmonically equivalent. They make the same sound, we just call them different names, depending on what context we're using them in. C flat has seven flats. So that's an example of the way uh, you can use the cycle. You could also use the cycle of fourths, by the way, to determine the order that the flats are added. So the order the flats are added begins at this point here. The first flat we add to a key, in other words, the first flat we add to F is B flat. The next flat we add is E flat. The next flat we add is A flat and so on. So if you're thinking about the order of flats that we add to keys and the order we add the flats, just remember that in terms of F, the next flat we add is the next key around the cycle. So for F major, we have a B flat. For, e, uh, for B flat major, we keep that B flat and we add E flat. 
for E flat major, we keep the flats we have and we add A flat and so on and so on. So very useful for that. But as I say, many, many, many more uses that we'll come to in a larger video. Anyway, I hope that's useful. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video, share about around with your friends. If you have any uh, questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, section below and I will answer as many of them as possible. Thanks very much and see you in the next one.